You know, there's nothing like being in the green room. You know, I love being in the green room. This is where the magic happens. Don't worry. I'm not going to disappoint you because I'm not going to read that bio. We've not read the bio yet. Why? Because you were sent the bio. You have it in front of you. But let's ask the question and find out who the person we're speaking to today. So, Andrew, take a moment and answer the question they all have on their mind right now. Like, who is Andrew? And more importantly, what are you up to these days, man? <laughs> well, hey, Shay, first of all, thanks so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here and I'm really excited to talk in front of your audience. And I guess who I am and what I'm up to, I've got the convenience of saying they're both one and the same. I am that guy who was bold enough to say he's got a book called The Last Law of Attraction book you'll ever need to read. And I'm really that guy who's trying to, like, finally trying to put to bed whatever people have that's stopping them. And it doesn't matter whether it's law of attraction or anything. I'm that one who's trying to answer that question and get people finally on track once and for all so that they can finally implement what they learn rather than continue to learn other stuff on top of it and never actually acting on it. You know, when you talk about things that are holding people back right now, uh, take a moment, if you would. And, you know, with all that's going on in the world right now, and especially with the, the pandemic that's going on, obviously, uh, and so much happening, what type of conversations have you been having with your peers right now in terms of applying the law of attraction, I don't want to use the word pivot because that's not the right word, adjust, right? And as entrepreneurs, we're always adjusting. We're always changing. This is nothing new for us. I mean, I get it. It's a serious and people are dying. That is new. But we're always changing. So my question to you is, what type of conversation are you having with your peers in order to stay focused during this time as you shift, change, or pivot, or whatever word you want to use these days? Right. Well, you know, the thing is, every time there's a challenge, you know, you recognize an opportunity. And obviously, you know, like a lot of entrepreneurs can really relate to that. This year, the conversation I'm having with people, it goes on a higher level because we have a higher challenge to rise to. So really, the, the direction we take this in, or at least I've been taking this in, is not just an opportunity to do something unique and better, but an opportunity to really lead by example and help other people. Because I think there's certain people that are just on the cusp of changing things or responding in the right way or making something happen, the conversation we're having is like, how can we help move them in that direction? Because it's one of those things where it's almost that old cliche, you know, when you're helping other people, when you're worrying about them, you almost on autopilot go and you're moving on your own anyway. So by having that whole selfish thing of being selfless, that whole selfish thing of just trying to um, really lift other people up, it kind of takes the obstacles that you have in front of yourself. It kind of like puts like blinders on and you're not thinking about them or worrying about them in the same way anymore. So in other words, it's kind of like been a luxury to worry more about helping people innovate than being an innovator yourself because that innovation kind of happens on autopilot. Mm, happens on autopilot. You know, in the back of my mind, I love being in the green room, man, because we, we get to talk about questions that might be on people's mind and I know you're going to talk about this whole law of attraction and what it means and how it applies to entrepreneurs later, but they might be curious, why is this so important to you, man? Why are you so passionate about this? Why should they pay attention to you? And I guess the real question is, why are you passionate about this? Where is this burning desire you have right now? Where does it come from? Yeah, you know, it's, it's one of those things. And again, entrepreneurs, I think we can all relate to having to kill our own dinner, so to speak. You know, we've always got to make sure things get done. Uh, I started um, going down all different modalities, all different positive thinking or whatever it might be, you know, 20 years ago. I was introduced to the law of attraction maybe 16 years ago, and it was always like push and pull and stop and start and succeed and fail. And it was just one of those things where when it finally clicked for me and I finally actually implemented it and I was actually reliable with it and consistent, just the benefits that I got out of my own life inspired me where I was like, listen – People don't even have to believe me. All I want to do is like put that out there, give them the opportunity, show them what worked for me, why it worked and how it worked. And it's not even a thing where they've got to listen to me. I just want them to have that opportunity to make their own decision. And I also, for me, it was a, it was a huge thing to recognize that people might not really resonate with that message or, or what the law of attraction might be. I wanted to challenge myself to give it to them in a way where even if they didn't believe in law of attraction, they can still benefit from it. They can still get the results. They can still get something even if they don't credit the law of attraction afterwards ever. It's just like they'll say, oh, no, it was me. It was my subconscious mind. It was luck. I honestly don't even care what reason they put in through as long as they get the result that they wanted out of it. 
You talk about results that they won for Crystal Cunningham is out there watching. What's up, Crystal Cunningham down in North Carolina? Dory's in the house, Philadelphia representing. Thanks a lot, Regina. Thanks for being here. She's up in New York, New York, by the way. I, I forgot what part of New York she's. I think she's outside the Bronx. No, no. Anyway, don't don't get me saying where it is because that now now they're all gonna say Shay. How do you remember all this stuff? And I don't. But they're watching right now. And before we go, I know we got a show to get going. They might be wondering, hey Shay, ask them what's what's one reason that an entrepreneur should should tune in right now? That they should listen? That they should pay close attention? Because we're about to start the next segment. We got a show. We got to get going. So I'm gonna ask them that question now. Why should an entrepreneur even care? I know it's an unfair question, but why should they even care about the law of attraction? Right. Well, you know what? They shouldn't care about the law of attraction. They should care about themselves. And what mm -hmm. I hope we're going to talk about in the next couple of minutes are isolating why people don't always implement on things, why they don't go to New Year's resolutions, for example, and maybe give them an insight that they might not have realized before so that they can use that information, hold the mirror up to themselves, and then take advantage of that, and then finally take action and implement. So, uh, we're not even worried about the law of attraction. We're just worried about getting somebody a win. So I would say stick around for that. Let's try and get you that today. Ah, let's try to get you that win today. Michelle MacArthur is watching said, yes, indeedy, by the way. Dory Purpose is tagging people saying, you've got to join. Learn how to finally get unstuck and move forward. Uh, I'm going to ask what that even means. We got a show to get going. We got to get going, ladies and gentlemen. In five, I know it's my favorite part. Four, three, two, one. We'll be back in just a second. We're going to find out how I can help you. I made to my mom. I only did this message for one person, and that's my mom. This is for you, mom. Love you. My name is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Shay Brown. My check, my check. All I do is we win, we no matter what. Got money on my mind, I can never get enough. And every time I step up in the field, everybody hands go up. Yes. Yeah. And they stay there. It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown, the Happy Entrepreneur, and welcome to the Happy Entrepreneur Show, the number one business development and revenue-focused late-night show in the country where we're on a mission, right? And our mission is to inspire. Our mission is to empower. And our mission is to provide you, that's right, you, the entrepreneur, with all of the resources, Stacy, with all the resources, Cynthia, with all the resources that are necessary to execute that big, big, big vision you have for the people you were called to serve. And I always say you have three visions, I believe. I believe first you have a vision for yourself. You know, the way you want to live, the, the clothes you want to wear, the organic foods you can't wait to eat, by the way, are in many, many cases the car you want to drive. And it takes resources, which means it takes revenue to make that happen. And then the second vision you have, I believe, is you have a vision for your loved ones, the ones that you care the most about. Depending on when you're watching this, we recently had something in the States called Thanksgiving, right? And, and many of you that couldn't go wanted to write a check to make sure someone else could have food on their table. That took resources. Some of you want to make sure that you have a vision for your kids. You want to send them to a, a school of your choice. Some of you just want to pay for someone's health care insurance or write a check for a cause you really believe in. It takes resources, which means it takes revenue to make that happen. And the third vision I believe you have, and that's why we have this platform to provide you with the resources you need, is you have a vision for the, that's right, the people you were called to serve. And I like to always use the story of Noah in the Bible. And you don't have to be a believer, okay? So I'm not going to pose my faith on you. I'm not going to do that. But imagine you're Noah in the Bible. There's this character, and, and Noah shows up, and he's been given all the experience from God. He's been given all the expertise that he needs. And right before he gets started, let's imagine there's a knock at the door. And he's like, what? What's going on? And they're like, Noah, over here, we're sorry to report, but there are no hammers in the house. No hammers, no big deal. Be just fine. I know, it's the second knock. Don't you hate that? Uh, what's going on over here? Uh, no nails. No hammer, no nails. Rule number one, we never panic. But the third knock always makes someone panic, doesn't it? It really does. What's going on? Uh, Noah, there, there's no wood and there's no people. 
to put the boat together. <laughs> Good luck on this vision. And maybe that's you right now. You can't believe any more than you're already believing, right? If you believe any more, you have a headache. Um, you want to do it, but for some reason, it's not happening. You're not taking the action that you need. You're not following through. You're not being consistent. Something's holding you back, so you're unstuck. So this morning, this evening, this afternoon, no matter what time it is, no matter where you are in the world, Andrew showed up for one reason and one reason only, and that is to help you have the resource. So, Andrew, what's going on, my man? Hey, Shay, really excited to be here, man. I'm so jazzed for this conversation. You have no idea. I can't even begin to express it. <laughs> well, it's an honor and a privilege, man, a treat and a treasure. You came up with the title, The Last Book on the Law of Attraction You Ever Need. Um, take a moment, if you would, and talk about why are people stuck? Like, why they, they just do the things they know they should be doing? And, and I have my hands raised, so there's no judgment, everyone. I have both hands raised. Yeah, so my hey, question is, I yeah. am just as guilty as you, man. So... <laughs> Let's put it this way, and by the way, apologies to all the clinical psychologists out there who have their own definition, but my own weird definition is we've got three minds. We've got the conscious, and we've got the subconscious, and right in the middle, we've got what I define as the ego. And a lot of people don't think about this, but the ego, as I define it, only has one job in the world, and that's to keep you alive. That means whatever money problems you're having right now, whatever relationship problems, job problems, even health problems – your ego knows you are alive right now, and the last thing it wants to do is risk the status quo of any kind of changes, even positive changes. Because for all the ego knows, when you get famous, you're going to get stalkers, and that's a threat to your survival. Or you get money, and family's going to come out of the woodwork, and they're going to try to take it from you. That's a threat to your survival. So a lot of times we try to improve ourselves. We try to start working out. We start to get better with our jobs. We start to get in some kind of, uh, kind of, some kind of a positive routine. And then something talks us out of it, whether it's fear, uncertainty, doubt, or whatever. That, in my experience, and again, I'm guilty more than anyone else, is the ego saying, uh-oh, I don't know if this is going to result in something that I can't predict. I don't want to risk our survival. And by the way, the ego loves you. This isn't a thing where the ego is trying to hurt you. It's just rating your survival, your guaranteed survival, according to it, over your satisfaction and your fulfillment and anything else. It just wants you to be alive. That's, in my view and in my experience is why people don't make as many changes as they want and why they're not as consistent as they could or should be. Hmm. Take us through a moment, if you would. You kind of defined the law of attraction. And before we get into what folks can use to help them individually, because hopefully you're going to share one, two, or three techniques, uh, give the folks a little bit of the backstory on, on how you came about actually writing this book that you're now using to share with the world and change the world. And for those folks that are watching out there, do me a favor. You have my permission, and I'm sure Andrew's okay with this. Hit the share button. Uh, hit the watch party button. And, and pay this message forward to your community. We believe in the giver's economy. The person that outgives the competition outearns the competition. The person that outgives the competition outearn the competition. We hit that share button, and that box pops up in there. Just put in that little box. Now is your time. Just put now is your time. Hashtag Andrew Cap. That's C A P. Now is your K -A -P. time. K A P. K A P. I'm saying C A K A P. K A P. Now is your time. Because now is your time. This is your moment. Talk to us. Give us the backstory, Andrew. Yeah. Well, again, you know, I learned about law of attraction like anyone else, and it kind of resonated with me, but it always seemed unreliable to me. But I'd later find out it wasn't unreliable. I was unreliable. I had my own successes and my own failures with it. And I basically came to an epiphany back in 2008 where I lost my first business and a relationship of three years all in the same week, which, long story short, was not my decision either way. And um, I was in a bad way, and I was waking up depressed and just like I didn't know where things were going to go. And I made a decision then. It's like, listen, this whole law of attraction thing, I don't even know why I'm thinking of this, but – it seems to work when I actually do it and I don't stop. So I'm going to be stubborn and indignant about this whole thing. And I don't care how it happens, when it happens, why it happens. I don't care about any of that. All I know is I'm going all in with this. And when I say all in, I don't mean all day, every day, because I knew I couldn't do that. I meant every day for just five or 10 minutes doing gratitude or visualization or whatever it might be. And I kid you not, the results that I experienced were beyond my wildest dreams. Within two weeks, I felt better, which is saying a lot with a broken heart. Within three months, I'm in a brand new relationship, way healthier, and I'm over my ex. Within four months, I'm making way more money than at any point in my life before that. And within six months, everything's different. I'm in the best shape of my life. I'm waking up happy and fulfilled. And I finally realized, wow, 
when I am stubborn enough to just do this, even if it isn't the law of attraction, even though I believe it is, things happen. It just works. And from that point on, because a book didn't teach it to me and a person, my own life experience taught me. And this book didn't happen until like 10 years later. And it was just a thing where I was like, listen, I want to do a new project, but I need it to be something that I can believe in that if a customer emails me and they have a question, I'm going to be enthusiastic every single day, day in and day out and be able to serve. Honestly, not to sound bad about it, I didn't want to be bored anymore. I wanted to make sure I was really engaged. And this project has not disappointed. I love the emails that come in. I love the conversations. And I love the people that are into law of attraction and not into it because we always get to a new place for both types of people. And it's just always super exciting every time out. The law of attraction has, has so many principles to it. And for Cynthia Smith is out there, says, I love it. Uh, Sinatra Malloy, I think I get that right, says, all I do is win, win, win. I'm all in. They're out there right now. Um, take, a, take a moment, if you would. There's so many principles in the law of attraction, obviously. We could, we could do a whole week show. But what's one of the principles out of the law of attraction that you would like to share that we can maybe apply in our lives? Yeah, well, um, it's basically, well, I mean, the main thing I always talk about is gratitude. Because gratitude, gratitude is basically just another way of saying, what I have is here. I have what I want. And if you believe in the law of attraction, you believe in the universe, gratitude is basically sending out a huge, strong, potent, unstoppable vibrational signal that's mirroring that back to you. If you don't believe in the law of attraction, you don't believe in the universe, well, what it's doing is it's still programming your subconscious mind, which supercomputer that it is, is also going to govern things and get a result for you. I personally believe it's a combination of both. But the number one thing is when you are grateful for something, both for things <clears throat> that you have and for things that you want as if they're on the way, something happens where sometimes you can't explain it. You just, it's one of those things where the results happen. And it's for me, as long as I get the result, I don't even care the explanation. I mean, I've thought about it and I give people explanations, but all I care about really is the result. And whether it's now or later, like I'm even happy to, uh, to teach my, like, my favorite method because um, I think when people try it, believe in the law of attraction or not, they just get an incredible experience out of it. And just it's so potent and so powerful. And then they're forever changed. And then they can do what they want as much as they want. And they never need a book to teach them or me to teach them. It's their life experience that teaches them. You said your favorite method. You can't just leave us hanging. You can't say, I normally teach <laughs> your favorite method and just leave us hanging on the cliff. We're all like, uh, so don't don't worry. You you watching at home right now or wherever you are, listening to the sound of this voice. Some of you on a podcast, some of you on Apple TV, some of you are watching live, maybe even right now um, on social media. We're going to ask, you know, give us a technique. We can't leave us hanging. <laughs> We're grateful that you're giving us the technique. So I love it. talk okay. to me, my man. Awesome. So I call this the time lapse. And the it's what? I didn't hear you. It's called the time lapse method. The time lapse. So someone, everyone, everyone, do me a favor. Look right below the video and write these words: the time lapse method by yes. Andrew Cap K A P. The time lapse method. And let's all tune in. In fact, I want you all to lean in, like 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 lean in, lean in, lean in. And now he's going to give it to us. Talk to us now. <laughs> now this is pretty easy. You're basically going to write down a list of 15 things that you're grateful for. Five of them are from your past. Five of them are from your present, and five are things that you want in your future. And the whole hook of this whole thing is you're going to write them all in the present tense. And then you're going to jumble up the list. So maybe the first thing is a present, and then a past, and the future, another present. It doesn't really matter. It's just a whole big jumbled thing. And you're basically going to take that list of 15 things with all jumbled up in the present tense. You're going to read through them one at a time, and you're going to give yourself 20 to 60 seconds each to just feel gratitude for that thing. And the cool thing about this, the favorite, the, the, like the hook of this is that two thirds of that list is real. It's here right now in your three dimensional reality. It can't be denied so that when you're feeling gratitude for that, there's a confidence and a certainty that just can't be manufactured. It's just genuine. And because psychologically, we as humans can't downshift easily when you're reading those future things that are spread out through the list you're gonna carry the same certainty and the same confidence. So again, it's the same potent vibration if you believe in that kind of thing. And if you don't, it's the same powerful imprint on your subconscious mind to get to work and start making it happen for you. And the best part is it feels great. So even if I'm deluded or if I'm lying and this thing doesn't get you the result, the gratitude you feel in the moment is still five minutes out of your day 
where you're just enjoying yourself and you're breathing a little bit easier and you're not thinking about the money problems or the relationship problems or anything else because law of attraction or not, there are studies that prove that gratitude is healthy. It improves confidence. It reduces anxiety. It helps with sleep. It's a thing that like anyone's going to win by doing it to say nothing of the result that will come later on for them. So when you say the word gratitude, um, what pops top of mind to you? Would you grat would you um, would you have would you grateful for today? I'll say, and uh, there's many different things, so it's not uh, too much of a loaded question. And what's the best technique that you recommend? Do you recommend that folks um, use a certain app? Do you recommend folks just uh, write it on a piece of paper? Do you recommend they kind of key it into the notepad and and kind of go back and read their different gratitudes, or is it one of those things where we write it down, we enjoy the moment? And then we're off. And then the next day we write it down and we enjoy the moment and we're off. I'm just trying to get a little more understanding. Yeah. So here's it's almost like a cop out answer, but it, it, it's a pure answer that most people don't really appreciate the power of it. The beauty is the answer is what feels best and most convenient and easiest for you, mm. meaning experiment with writing it down or putting it in an app or whatever, because there's no wrong way as long as you enjoy it. The real key to all this, and by the way, the real key that sometimes people aren't consistent is they haven't found something that they just enjoy because a lot of people, they're like, oh, I got to like grit my teeth through this method or this meditation or whatever. If you're not having fun, then you're not even thinking about what you want. You're thinking about the lack of what you want without realizing it. So the whole key is finding a method, finding a style, finding a way of doing this that you're like, I can do this for five minutes every day and look forward to it. It becomes a choice and not a chore. It becomes something I get to do and not something that I have to do. And that's the real key. The key is to have fun, experiment, play with different things and just see what feels good. And you can do the same thing every day nonstop or you can do a completely different thing every single day. There's no wrong way. And to answer your earlier question, what I'm specifically grateful for it's, you're right. It is a countless list. But the one thing I always wake up grateful for is my body and specifically like even my heart, which I recognize has been beating in my chest every second since even before I was born for decades now. And everyone else has that that beautiful heart of yours that is working in service to you, pumping nutrients and blood and health and vitality to all the other parts of your body that are also working for you. If you don't know what to be grateful for right now, just look in the mirror, because even if there's something about you that you don't like. This is a gift. Your body is working overtime in ways that you don't even recognize and see every day or re just realize. It's amazing. It's an amazing thing to think about each day. And when you think about that, it just shifts your whole mood and your whole vibe when you dive into your workday. Yeah, I really like the idea of um, doing the five, five and five, uh, the five formulas. I, I, I like that. It, it makes it so much easier and it allows you to focus in, by the way. So I, yes. I, I, I like it. One of the journals I've used uh, personally is the five minute journal. And it does say at the top, what are three things you're grateful for? I'm always like thinking of yesterday, but I like the idea now that you can be grateful for what you have, grateful for something yesterday, but also grateful for something in the future. And uh, that's a big aha moment. For those folks that are out there, do me a favor. Look right below the video. Look right below the video. And it's, it's okay. It's okay. I mean, Andrews, he's tuned in. He's right here. You and he and I, through the power of these fiber optic lines, we're, we're there. But you look below the video and write, what are you most grateful for today? What's one mm. thing you're grateful for today? Like in this moment that pops top of mind, did you feel comfortable sharing that you're really grateful for? And, and go ahead and, and, and write that right below. And, and, and I'll, I'll ask... Um, you know, Andrew himself as well. What's one thing he's grateful for? And one thing I'm grateful for right now is that my family is safe right now. And there's a pandemic going on and I'm blessed that my immediate family right now are pandemic free. Right. And I know that might be the case for everyone. And we've lost a family member uh, to this particular pandemic. So I, I get the seriousness of it. But at this moment right now, everyone's pandemic free. I'll say it like that. And I'm grateful for that. And there was a pie that that wasn't something that would be top of mind to you. Andrew, as they're writing right below the video what they're grateful for, um, what would pop top of mind for you, my friend? Believe it or not, 2020 and 2021, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm grateful for the way, and, and I realize some people have had it harder than others, but for me, I'm grateful for how 2020 has really stretched and challenged me. Mm -hmm. And I view this as like a slingshot here. I think when we get into 2021, things are going to explode in a much better way for everyone all around. And I'm grateful in advance for the happy surprises, the things that I can't even anticipate or predict that are going to go well in life and in business, not just for me, but for everybody. I think we are on the cusp of something really amazing 
as a world. Um, I, I wholly believe that, and I'm super grateful for that every day, especially as we go closer and closer and closer to New Year's Day and launch into 2021. Mm, I love it. You know, there, there's a lot of different techniques, obviously, in the, the law of attraction. I'm curious, um, is there a series of techniques that you must follow step by step uh, in order for them to to really to maximize the result? Right. Um, and and it, so you might have to kind of frame the conversation for the folks that are watching right now. But the question I'm kind of asking is, is there certain techniques if you go step by step by step um, it gets you a certain result? So I think, I mean, I, my book, I, I put in all these things where there is step by step by step, yeah. but it's more of a guide than a rule. I, yeah. The whole goal of any method worth its salt, and that's whether it's in my book or any other book or YouTube channel, wherever you find it, the whole point is that you think about what you want and what you have while feeling good. So as long as you're doing that, that's all that you need. I mean, really, the, you know, the step by step is um, – Think about what you want. Be grateful for it. I know that sounds oversimplified, mm -hmm. but it, it really I think people tend to overcomplicate it and they tend to tell themselves that they're doing it wrong. Again, the ego stepping in doesn't know what might happen and they tend to talk themselves out of it. But, but for like from my standpoint, it really just comes down to, you know, thinking of things that you're grateful for or scripting, which is just a really fancy way of saying journaling about your life in the present tense as if you're already living your dream life, which, again, it just triggers your subconscious mind. Or just like standard visualization practices where you close your eyes, you think about what you want. You can do it for five minutes. You can do it for 10 minutes. You can do it for 90 seconds. It doesn't really matter. For me, it's all about like the strategy I have is how can I make this vibrant and fun and engaging? Like me, I like I have a thing called, um, you know, the instant replay method. And it's almost like we're thinking like you're in sports center, And like rather than seeing like a, a highlight on a, on a touchdown pass or a home run, you're picturing what you want in instant replay where you're like looking at different angles of it. It's going in slow motion. It's speeding up. You're just like imprinting it in your mind and having a fun way of looking at it. For me, it's all about finding something that's fun, a fun way of doing it. So that, again, you're just thinking about what you want and not worrying about when or how or why the result might come. Just knowing it'll come. And in the meantime, enjoying life to whatever measure you can, because it could be five months or five years. You got to enjoy life right now. You don't want to waste it in the meantime. I love it. Are these ways that you actually are controlling the, the ego part? You said, you know, it's the left side, the right side, and then there's ego in the minute, in the middle. Um, are you kind of talking? Are you kind of programming your ego as well? Or is it just there monitoring, trying to keep you safe the whole time? Right. So going back to like conscious, subconscious ego, ego being the middle, subconscious, in my view, being way stronger. This is my way of bypassing the ego, accessing the subconscious mind, and then the ego can't fight that. So it's more like, listen, I love the ego. I realize it's it's there. It's it's trying to look out for me, but I'm going to use this fun way to send instructions to the subconscious mind and the universe, and it's just going to drag the ego kicking and screaming to the result that I want. And it's going to do it again on autopilot. It's just going to be a natural thing. And the really cool thing about it is once you achieve what you want and you're still alive, the ego's like, okay, Andrew's still alive. I guess now I'm going to fight tooth and nail to protect this reality. I'm going to protect that awesome relationship he's in, that new job he has, that new raise he got, that new business that's thriving. I'm alive right now. I am going to protect that tooth and nail. That's the really cool thing about it. So it's really about like, you know, being gentle and kind to yourself and not judging yourself too harshly, but then using the methods to go to the subconscious mind, let that do a lot of the work for you. Mm, I love it. I love it. And when you're working with entrepreneurs are having conversation with entrepreneurs is this part of the focus that you know obviously the gratitude is there another technique that might be top of mind that you also share as well and i know we only have so much time we can only get to so many but is there another technique you're like you know what jay that gratitude is like that's one home run they're all home runs or he wouldn't have in his book obviously but that's one home run here's something else jay another technique i can quickly share in the time we have and for you out there you hit the share button you hit the watch party button right now. And when you do that, go ahead and write these words. Just put, be grateful. Just put, be grateful. And, and, and for someone out there that's, that's, that's watching right now or see those words, you're sending a signal to them that wherever they are, they're enough right now. We're going to ask them for another technique, but if you just apply this one, it shifted his life, it shifted lives of others, and it'll certainly do it for you as well. What's one more technique, my friend? So a favorite of mine, I call it the two years from now letter scripting method. Mm -hmm. And this is in recognition. Again, we talk ourselves out of things. And one thing we talk ourselves out of is I can never visualize the perfect emotion for when I get what I want. So let's bypass that. Let's 
picture ourselves two years in the future, or you can say six months or one year or whatever, but I'll say two years because it's plausible for your mind. And you're already living the life you've wanted. You already got what you want. And you're writing a letter to your past self or yourself from today in this moment. And you're saying, you know, dear Andrew, um, you will not believe like the awesome life that you've gotten thanks to sticking with these techniques and never giving up on yourself. Then you go to I, because you don't want to say you, you want to say I like, listen, I am living the best life. I finally got that house that I wanted. The book is doing better than ever. I'm getting still five-star rate of reviews. I'm still getting people emailing me all their success stories. I'm still getting interviews with people like Shay. It's like, it's the best thing in the world. I mean, I could have been writing this two years ago and I would have been writing about this moment. But when you do that, you don't know, you don't know how you're going to feel because it's not happening. So you don't have to assign a specific emotion, meaning you have permission to feel any emotion, whether it's strong or subtle. And it really just engages your subconscious mind and it feels good and just it gets you in that moment, which, again, brings us back to feeling good while thinking about what you want and not worrying about anything else at all. And it really is that simple. And you could write a whole page. You could write 20 pages. Do whatever you want. You can handwrite it. If your hand cramps, you could type it. If you don't like typing, record a message. I, I call it spoken scripting. You don't even have to write or type if that's not your thing. You can literally pick out your phone, leave a message as if you're leaving a recording to yourself from two years in the past, whatever it takes. And if you don't want to write a letter to yourself, write a letter to your best friend, write a letter to the universe, write a letter to your mom, to your dad. Tweak the method in any way that you can, in any way that you want, so that you're having fun. That's all that really matters. Mm, I like the part of having fun. Um, and because it adds to me, it adds, it means joy. It means peace. Not you got to be, ah, but there's, yes. there's peace. There's you being calm and it's all on the inside and it relieves the pressure for Greg readers out there that's watching. Thanks for joining for the first time. Pamela Conry, it's always a pleasure. Thank you for being out there. And all of you right now, Dwayne, who are tuning in, you're at the right place at the right time, hearing the right message, by the way, we're moving into a, a segment called Today is My January 1st. And you talk about being grateful. You talk about that. And for those folks who want to know what in the LL Cool J is Shay talking about, today is my January 1st. For those folks who know what I'm talking about, you look right below the video, you look right below the video, and you write those words, today is my January 1st. And for those folks that are hearing it, today is my January 1st. It represents one of those dates, not a date on the calendar. We don't wait for a January 1st day on the calendar. We create a January 1st moment. And it's one of those moments throughout the day, and it's probably a thousand moments where you get to make a decision, and that decision could forever change the trajectory of your life. So you make a decision that you're going to work out. That's a January 1st moment. Are you going to sit back on the couch and binge watch uh, Netflix for some of you? That's a January 1st moment. You make a decision that you're going to eat hamburgers and hot dogs and, and salt, pepper, french fries, ketchup. Well, my son's got to put some hot sauce on there. They got to have hot sauce. Or, or you go to the refrigerator, you open up the refrigerator. Inside the refrigerator, there's some kale. That tastes good, doesn't it? There's some broccoli. You have some of that. I know it, I know it, I know it. Oh, it gets better. There's some Brussels sprouts. That's a January 1st moment. It's a do-over. It's a fresh start. It's a my past does not equal the future. So my question to Andrew as he's sitting there right now, when you hear those words, today is my January 1st, what kind of goes to your mind? What are you thinking? Mm -hmm. What does it mean? You know, I don't know if this is going to sound profound or controversial or cliche or a combination, but I, I'm of the, the opinion that every day is January 1st and no day is January 1st. And what I mean by that is I view literally every day like, what can I do to make a fun impact, fun and impact? And I'm like motivated by the fact that like every day is a new opportunity and it's, it's somebody's January 1st. Like, you know, for all I know, a video that I create is going to be someone's first experience with me. So I've got to make that video good. This book might be, I mean, I know it's called The Last Law of Attraction. It might be someone's first book in the Law of Attraction. I've got to make it worth it. Like everything I do, I try to bring an in intentionality where there is a freshness, there's something new. And it's kind of like this, ad, I, like this idea and attitude of just like bring it every day. And um, probably 90% of the time I do that. There's 10% where it doesn't happen. And I use that as an opportunity not to judge myself. I'm like, all right, apparently it's January 2nd or apparently it's December 31st. But you know what? That's cool because we're going right back to January 1st tomorrow or maybe even later this afternoon and just keep going. And, and that fuels me personally. I have a lot of fun just thinking of it in that way. Wow. You, you may have heard this before because it's so true. Um, and then sometimes there's truth inside of truisms. But consistency is the key. Consistency is the key consistency is the key and having said that what do people struggle with the most 
Well, let's start with consistency, right? Yeah, I know my hand is raised on this one too. So my question to you is, what do you teach through the law of attraction for folks in order for them to be consistent? Or as my mentor, Dr. George Frazier would say, in order for them to hashtag stay the course. Mm -hmm. So you need one of two things, or maybe both. You either need a huge why that's going to motivate you, that's going to be a carrot on a stick to make you keep going, mm -hmm. or on the assumption that you still might run out of fuel at some point, you want to pick things that are enjoyable that you look forward to. Like in, in my book, um, The Beginning, um, I talk about this example of imagine you're in the gym and someone says, hey, you want the perfect body? I've got this magic ice cream. It's got all the positive qualities of ice cream and none of the negative ones, and just one spoonful a day is going to give you the body of your dreams. Would you do it? And assuming you like ice cream, if not the cookies, pizza, whatever, but assuming you like ice cream, of course you're going to do it. One, because you like it, so you look forward to it every day. And two, it doesn't take a long, like it's one spoonful. So if like, you know, law of attraction standpoint, you do a five minute method, you're going to be consistent with it if you like it, because it's very consumable, it's very small and you enjoy it. Now, some people, they need to be consistent in things that are take a little bit longer or a little bit more difficult. And again, that's where you need a huge why. But ideally, in the middle of all those things that you're doing, you want to make sure you're having a good time or that there's something about it that's fulfilling to you or inspiring you because that's how you stay consistent. When it's not an uphill battle and you're honored and privileged and excited to be there, that does a lot of the heavy lifting for you. Mm, makes a lot of sense. For those folks that want to stay in this conversation with you over and beyond the day, two questions probably at top of mind. Number one, what type of clients does Andrew's firm accept these days? And number two, um, how can they stay in this conversation with you over and beyond today? How can they stay connected with John? I mean, with Andrew? Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny. I, I don't, I only take people on now, like as like if they request, I don't even like put myself out there, mm -hmm. but the people I, I've been working this year specifically, just obviously all law of attraction. Mm -hmm. And you know, if people reach out to me, most people read the book first because you've got to understand my mindset because what if I'm not your cup of tea? You don't want to spend money on me if I'm not your cup of tea, right? So most people at least look at the book and I keep it for four bucks on Amazon and make it nice and cheap for people. So people want to connect in that way. They can just go to lastlawofattractionbook.com and that'll auto forward to the Amazon listing. But if you don't want to pull out your wallet and you still want to learn, just go to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Andrew Cap. It's free info. I teach new methods. I try to keep things fun. I try to keep things like fast and loose and easy and just try to give a new perspective on law of attraction and on consistency and on gratitude that will hopefully be fun for people. So best way is to kind of like, you know, dip your toe in the pool and see if you enjoy that. And then you can make a decision if you want to work with me or not. But hopefully the content in and of itself, even before working with me, will hopefully be valuable to you. Said so well. We're moving to a segment now called Rapid Fire. And Rapid Fire, for those folks that are watching for the first time, welcome all the new folks that are watching. Uh, Rapid Fire is when we get to ask any question that's top of mind to us. And, and Andrew can accept the question. He can peacefully say, uh, I want to pass. And the first question that's top of mind to me right now, it's my favorite question. So y'all know what it is, the regulars. I ask it almost every single time. And the question is, Andrew, of all the mentors you've had along this journey of life, and you've had so many mentors, What's one lesson you've learned from your mentors that you can pass along to us? Now, now y'all know how we do this, like, because this is like really important. Like, he's going to give us like the best or one of the best lessons he can pass to us. So, so you stop what you're doing. You, you, you lean in now, like lean in, like, like lean in toward the camera. If you're watching on your phone, just lean in toward your phone right now. And, and you can even do your hands like this if you're sitting down. You can do your hands like this and say, oh, wow, thank you, because he's about to lay it on you. So what's the one idea, Andrew, you're going to share with us, my man? So again, at the risk of sounding cliche, and I, I think I talked about this, you know, the the top of the hour. Mm -hmm. I think the most selfish thing you can do is being selfless. And what I mean by that is, I want to. I'll gladly be a billionaire, but I don't want to be a billionaire in a world that's in ruins. Because what's the point of having all that money if your favorite pizzeria is out of business, or if you know you can't go and see your favorite movie, or you just like. If the world isn't there, like I think the best thing you can do is do your part to raise the world up, raise people around you in whatever way that works. And that's that opportunity is there on your job no matter what you're doing right now, in your business no matter what you're doing. If you're selling toilets, you can still do it. There's nothing stopping you from raising the world, from being a good person, from helping through your business or out of your business. I think the best thing you can do, which by the way, I guarantee you will come around and help you in your business, is find a way to make sure you're being of service to others and treating them right because when you lift the world around you in the right way, you're basically creating the best world possible for you. Again, the best, most selfish thing to do. 
and I got no problem with that because everybody wins. Mm. You know, you, you mentioned earlier, um, and maybe you shared the lesson you learned, how you were able to apply the law of attraction and it helped you in your health, it helped you in your relationships, and that's pretty huge. So, so take a moment and share what the principle is, once again, and the lesson you learned using that principle. Sure. Well, I mean, you know, the law of attraction to me is like what you focus on becomes your reality. And again, whether you believe in law of attraction or not, I can challenge you to try a method for 30 days and just see what happens. And the lesson I learned was it was just about the consistency. If I do it once a week, nothing happens. If I do it once a day for even just five minutes, I know that seems so small, but positive thoughts have so much more power than negative ones anyway. It's, it's incredible the difference that it makes. That alone will just create something. And again, if I'm wrong or deluded, you're not going to lose because you're still spending five minutes out of your day where you're enjoying yourself. You're thinking about something good. It's a good mood. You're releasing endorphins. You're you're doing something healthy for yourself. So no matter what, you're getting a win. But I also would tell you, I'd suggest that you might have a huge win on the back end that will shock you if you give yourself an opportunity to see it through. What was the biggest challenge you had writing the book? Just getting the book done. <laughs> yeah. So I once basically make sure that it was crystal clear. Like I, I, it took me nine and a half weeks to write. Um, I spit out like a whole mess on paper and then I massaged it and refined it. For me, the biggest challenge was how can I word this and articulate this so that everyone that's been through the same thing, I'm actually speaking to them and not just like going off on some weird tangent. I was very intentional in just making sure that it was an easily digestible book so that people then would hopefully be inspired enough and give themselves just enough permission to try it because the book is not going to teach them the experiential result that they get from hopefully using it. That's going to teach them. And that's what I was very intentional about trying to do when I was writing the book. Yeah. Yeah. When you, when you look back and, and you hear folks that are reading the book and they're, they're sharing their, their comments with you and, and how it's changing their lives. Um, how does it make you feel, man? It's, Shay, it's, it's extremely humbling, honestly. It's yeah. it's surreal and humbling. And I mean, it never gets old. I, you know, so far, I don't think it ever will. And it, it wasn't the one, I didn't expect that. It's, it's one, again, I think it's a perfect example. Sometimes you'll do something and hopefully you'll be intentional and hopefully you'll want to serve. But I, I never thought I'd get some of the feedback that I get from people, like deep stuff that I never share because it's so personal for them. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm humbled and, and honored and, and just grateful every single day. Yeah. A second to last question. Um, when is Andrew the happiest? Like what makes you happy mm. these days? Um, you know, there, there's two, <laughs> there's three, well, okay. There's a couple of times. <laughs> One, just talking about this stuff. It just, it feels good. Yeah. Um, two, just like relaxing in the moment where like, you don't have to say anything. You don't have to do anything. You're just there and being present with yourself. And three is um, the one daily tactic that I do still. Like I take my own medicine and I still do stuff from this book. But the one thing I do every single day is I leave a message to a friend across the country about all the stuff I'm grateful for. And he does the same thing for me. So that daily commitment where we're kind of like trying to raise each other's game and doing that, that for me just like really lifts me up and keeps me excited and gets me inspired every single day and just keeps me going. That that pumps me up these days. Wow, man. But I tell you what, I'm pumped. I'm excited. Uh, I'm going to apply that that principle tomorrow when I write in my uh, gratitude section of the five minute journal. Not that I promote in the five minute journal, but that's the one that I use consistently for the last several years. And I'm going to use that five minute one. There's only three lines, but, you know, five things I'm grateful for yesterday, five things I'm grateful for now. And what is something I'm grateful for in the future, man? So you really had a had an impact on my life. Uh, so I want to say thank you first for being on the Happy Entrepreneur Show. Shout out to Tina Torres and all the wonderful things she does, by the way, and, and helping me connect you and I together and just being a connector and being a collaborator and being willing to share resources. At a time when a number of folks are holding things in, she's operating from this place of abundance and Shay. The world needs more of whom we know. So let's share. And so I appreciate you, Tina. You're a rock star. Over to you. Andrew, to have your final thoughts and final comments. I appreciate it, man. I got to have you back. You have a heart to serve. You have a heart to give. A number of folks say, I don't have time to stick around, Shay, to share any final thoughts and comments. But you said, no, nah, I'm, I'm cool. I'm, I'm with that. I'm with that. I'll, I'll share something to empower folks. So tell them two things. Number one, one, how do they connect with you so they understand mm -hmm. how to do that again? And then number two, whatever your final thoughts are, man. We got to have you back. Thanks a lot for being on the, the Happy Entrepreneur Show. We appreciate you. And, um, we we're grateful that you're here in this moment today, and we'll be grateful tomorrow as well. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Well, I mean, I'll say real quick, you know, lastlawofattractionbook.com if you want to check out the book. 
youtube.com slash Andrew Cap if you just want to check out free content. And I guess the thought I want to leave with is everyone, this is going to sound like I'm blowing smoke, but I mean this. Everyone right now is on the right track because they're listening to you and they're like, I think people, to be a guest, you get a backstage pass and see how an intentional Shay is about this stuff. This dude is working overtime. He is so on it about what he's like creating and the people he's bringing. And that's with or without me. I'm just saying. So um, I just want to encourage people like the fact that they're listening to a show like this means they're already inspired to lift themselves up. So you guys are already like on the right track. Like the only thing I would say is if you don't have it and have it yet is consistency, being consistent in what you're doing and um, try out some gratitude methods, you know, whether it's mine or someone else's you might be pleasantly surprised, but just know that you're already on the right track. Otherwise you wouldn't be watching any of these episodes at all to begin with. So Shay, mad props to you. Like I, again, I mean this, the intentionality that you bring to this show is, um, is off the charts. And it was just so cool before we even began just to see how you are so on it. And that lifts me up and that inspires me that I'm going to bring that with me into the emails I answer tomorrow into the stuff I do tomorrow and the week and the year ahead. So thank you for that. Thanks a lot, man. I certainly appreciate you being here. And once again, thank you so much to the one and only Tina Torres for connecting us, by the way, for you watching. Thank you for tuning in. I want you to know that you're amazing, that you're incredible, and that for you, today is your January 1st. Guess what? You can be grateful for what you have today. For you, today really is your January 1st because you can be grateful for what you're enjoying in the present moment. As he said, and I think it's so important that for you, the future is bright. You can go ahead and put the sunglasses on. The best are still yet to come. Why? Because you're grateful for that which has not got here yet. And it's possible that it can happen for you as well. So for you, thank you for joining. For those folks who want to know who's doing all that yelling, who's doing all that screaming, my name, by the way, is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. And I promise you from the bottom of my heart, we'll make some good things happen. We connect again next time. Remember, though, remember, time is long. Life, on the other hand, is very, very short. So you got to live in the moment and you got to make it count. God bless and we wish you success. Thanks a lot, my man. I appreciate it. We'll see y'all later. We out of here. Peace. Thank you for joining. Hit the share button. Don't forget to do that. Pay this message forward. We got to go. We got to go. I made to my mom. I only did this message for one person, and that's my mom. This is for you, mom. Love you. My name is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, check. Shay Brown. My check, my check. All I do is we win, we win, we no matter what. Man. Got money on my mind, man. I can never man. get enough. And every time I step man. up in the field, yeah. everybody yes. hands go up. Yes. Yeah. And they stay there. Thank you, thank you, Captain.